is my dream bike, a bike which I showed you guys about a month or so ago. But since then, as crazy as it sounds, I've still not been able to ride it. But now it's this retro Trex time to shine because in this video, I'm gonna give it some TLC, replace some of the parts which are worn out and make some tweaks to the bike to make it exactly how I like. Since you guys last saw this bike, I've been on a bit of a spending spree gathering up all of the parts that I think I need so I can turn the bike from looking like this to looking like something like this. That way I can then replace all of the parts which are worn out, replace some parts to make the bike a bit more like how it was when the pros raced on it, and also just make little tweaks and changes to have the bike exactly how it is when I like to ride it. Now, this is very much my dream bike, but this isn't a dream build series or the dream build process because as much as I'd love to spend an endless amount of money on making this bike how I want it to, I'm trying to be relatively sensible with the budget and kind of like, you know, keep it real world. So before I can start fitting any of this cool stuff, the first thing I need to do is actually start taking this bike apart. So that is pretty much everything taken off the bike because of a pile of parts behind me. Some bits we're gonna reuse, some bits are gonna go in the bin. Before we start putting it together, I've already taken these other little stickers off, but I'm gonna try and risk taking the main sticker off that's on the chainstay. Now I'm hoping that, like the other stickers, I can just peel it off and it's gonna have immaculate paint underneath. Okay, blue stickers all the way off. Um, in a minute you can see the inside of the chainstay and it is a little bit oh, chipped up and stuff but it's not too bad. So I guess what I'm going to do is afterwards find myself a new bit of blue sticker and tidy this little section up. I think it'll be alright. Um, okay, right, most important thing, get rid of that. Shine all of this stuff up. I'm going to use this, which is the Silka Ultimate Graphene Spray Wax to um, give the, the frame like a really nice hardware and protective coat. And um, we'll get building it back up, shall we? Let's do it, three, two, one, go. The paint on this bike is actually neat, tidy, and looking pretty good for a bike that's kind of quite old now, which, uh, which is nice, it's good to know, eh? Right, so now I'm gonna start applying the graphene spray wax. Pretty simple process. Spray it on the bike, spray it on the cloth, wipe and coat all of the surfaces. Give it two to three minutes to dry. Buff to a shine. Start with the back section of the bike and then work our way forwards. Now we wait. So one of the biggest uh, spends in terms of the upgrades for this bike is the fancy carbon fiber wheels. Now, I've not bought a new cassette, so there's nothing wrong with this cassette. It can just get transferred straight across. Now, what I'm gonna do at the end of this build is have a run through and tally of what I've actually spent on most of the different parts, because it'd be interesting to see what the total thing owes me. But, bits like the quick releases, the cassette, all other bits and bobs that we can reuse, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So, switch the cassette over while we wait for, um, wait for this wax to dry, and then we can shine it up. And the quick releases that came on this bike are these super lightweight, ultra thin things, which I've got to be brutally honest and say I'm not a huge fan of. I would love to find some original Bonchager ones that go with these wheels. If you have some that you want to sell, let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise, for now, I'm gonna to have to make do with these. I'm gonna rush, there we go. Right, that can get lost. See ya. I hope the seat post is long enough. I really want to use it. If you look on the back, I won it in a bike race years ago. A Payton. 
I'm not sure it was worth all the hard work just to get that little bit of laser etching. But whatever, I've earned it. First part that's gonna go on the bike, I'm gonna put the new bottom bracket in. This is a ceramic bottom bracket from Kogel. Do I need a ceramic bottom bracket? Absolutely not, but I took it off of the track bike that I used earlier on this year when I went to the track national champs and I thought, oh, well, why not? Just sat in the box, put it to good use. I'm also gonna be using original Shimano premium grease when I'm building up this bike. Again, do I need to use this? No, but I thought it was a really nice thing to buy and use like the original grease. So that's what we're gonna do. Also, you should avoid trying to get this on your fingers, so put it onto a little screwdriver. Tight. Now, there's absolutely no methodical process to building up this bike because I'm just going at it and having a little bit of fun. But next thing I'm gonna do is put these handlebars on. These are carbon fiber handlebars I bought from Amazon. Now, let's just saying that out loud sort of makes me feel slightly nervous and concerned. But um, from all of the reviews, there's been lots of people that seem to have bought them and are happy with them. They only cost me 50 pounds. They're made by the brand to seek or Tossek, who knows. Um, but I thought it was probably like really good way of trying to save some money on this build. And why the hell not? These are narrower than what was on there, 38 centimeters wide. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this sort of all goes together and how I get on with the shape. But seems fine, just bang them on. Now the other week I made a video where I showed refurbishing this exact rear derailleur and I also mentioned I was gonna replace the pulley wheels. So here they are. I'm not entirely sure these are specifically the exact right ones that go with this derailleur, but with any luck, they should be a suitable alternative. So, let's see what we got. Standard Shimano. They look like the right size. It's more a case of if they're the right width. So what I'm gonna do, try and install them, see how we go. Let's get this mech bolted back onto the bike. Now cranks have been a bit of a sore subject of my bike builds of recent times namely uh, the Dura Ace crank, which I bought for hundred pounds. Anyway, we'll brush over that. But the crank, which is on this bike, is a bit scuffed up and the metal is all damaged around by where the pedals go. But fear not, because if you remember, when we go back to Crankgate a few months back, I bought one of these second hand, exactly the same series, exactly the same crank length and chainring sizes, and it sat on a bike in the corner of my garage over there, so I can whip that off and it'll be a direct replacement for this one with its scuffed up arms. And I haven't had to spend a penny. And you know it, it's true, because it was in the other video. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Got the front quick release in, let's bash the front wheel into the bike. That makes the rear wheel sort of back half of the bike starting to take shape. Then we can set it onto the floor. I can angle the handlebars correctly, angle the shifters correctly. Then I can start to move it on to getting this bike cabled up, clean the chain, put the chain on, set the brakes, set the gears. And before you know it, I mean, it's starting to look like a bike. And let's just hold this in place. I mean, come on. Look at this thing. Saddle next. This is a slight sticking point in this build series because this is um, a saddle that I just had left kicking around off one of my other gravel bikes, actually. I ordered a special edition saddle to go on this bike, but it's been held up in the post, which is 
very upsetting to say the least, but I've ordered an SLR Novus Boost just like this saddle, but the special edition new buck version, which has got this brown suede from the top of it instead of the, the standard black. As soon as it arrives in the post, I'm gonna put it on this bike, and if it arrives before this video goes out, we'll have a picture of it right now with me smiling or happy about it. But for now, this one's going on. So here we are a day later. This is the finished article and oh boy, does it look good. Beautiful, sexy, amazing, incredible, wonderful. Add in any other adjectives that you can possibly think of. So quick run through of the bike before we wrap this video up. But before we get to that, you'll notice there are a couple of changes from yesterday. I've got some fresh bar tape on and my amazing saddle has arrived, ah uh, yeah. So these turned up in the post yesterday, hence why I couldn't finish the bike off. Unfortunately, I've had to change the seat post from the one I had in the bike, but in the coming weeks, I'm gonna find a compatible seat post that feels like I'm gonna finish this bike off. So let's have a super quick run through of what's actually new and changed on this bike. Well, we've got the upgraded wheels, we've got upgraded tubular tires, that's helping save a load of the weight. Basically, what I've done is clean it up, repair it, put some fresh cables on, and put a new lease of life into this bike. Still got Dura-Ace components throughout, apart from the Ultegra calipers and front derailleur. Got some modern carbon bottle cages, my current Wahoo Speedplay pedals. And like all in, I reckon this total project has set me back in the region of about a thousand pounds or so, but that's not what it's all about. It wasn't about coming in at a certain budget. It was about making the bike exactly how I want it to be to make my exact dream bike. Next thing we need to do is weigh this thing, do a free up sound check. But before that, let's have a quick tally up of what I've spent on some of the main items for this build. Right, let's zero these scales. We'll have the weight of this bike up on screen that it was before I started upgrading it. 7.57, pretty respectable and it's going to be slightly heavier than what it was last time because I've added pedals onto the bike now. But either way, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do that free up sound check. These are going to be good. Get these up to speed. Love it. Retro. Okay, there we go. That is my dream bike, upgraded, tweaked and adjusted exactly how I like it. I'm still going to keep evolving this bike as time progresses. And all I need to do now is think of some cool videos so I can actually get out and ride this thing because it's breaking my heart that it's not turned to pedaling anger out on the road yet, but I'm gonna fix that pretty soon. Right, I'm out of here. Don't forget, if you wanna see more cool bike tech videos, subscribe to GCN Tech and turn on your notifications. And also, well, just let me know what you think of the bike in the comments. See you later.